Hey, howdy. Today we embark for Radiant Ruins. Ooh. And the save data was updated too. Nice. So, Radiant Ruins. Um... This is a bit of a tough one. I kind of want to go the Neon City route through Square Square World because it seems like it'll be it won't be as far. But a part of me also wants to go through Forest Pier because through all of this, I still have not gone to Forest Pier Forest Pier on this file yet. I went earlier, but because this is the file that I I saved over thinking I saved over the other file thinking that getting ending negative one was going to screw something up. And I had gotten to Radiant Ruins during that time, so I gotta go again. So, whatever, let's go. Oh, <laughs> there's an exhibition here. What's the other one? Horse Carnival... Right, today's the 19th, so tomorrow there'll be a new one. And Smiley Face Deck, I'm pretty sure I've been there before. I remember it being kind of a headache to get to, get to though. Hey, my guy. How you doing? Yeah, that is some more, there have been some more indie news. Some good, some bad. The first news, and the one that made me the happiest, was if anyone's ever heard, still remembers the game Little Inferno. It was an old, it was a game released in 2012. It was the same people who made World of Goo, Jacksepticeye played it way back in the day, and it was one of the first games that that really got unpopular. Well, they released an update to it after God knows how long. Called the Ho Ho Holiday Update. And considering the original game, if you played the original game, you can already probably guess the way that the that this is gonna go. Because the first game, the original game, was Scathing, scathing, scathing criticism of corporate practices and capitalism, and you know the drill by now with games like that. It's very good. I highly recommend it. The um, the music that plays. I forget. What I'm supposed to do here. I can't, I'm kind of just gonna walk her until I find that dead nail. But it's about what you'd expect. It's a scathing thing about capitalism and how it's not healthy to have so many, to have an entire culture revolving around, oh, buy this thing so that you can buy this other thing. And then burn it. You have the money, right? It's very on the nose, but I like it. Ah. Back here. Um. Where did I end up? I need to land at that dead end, because that leads to the bent screw, I'm pretty sure. Uh, 
Okay. The other news is that Broforce is getting an update. Now, for those of you that haven't played Broforce, it is... <laughs> well, it's quite spectacular. It's very... Very clearly inspired by the Metal Slug series, but with a dash of freedom. <laughs> it is so, like, on-the-nose Amer- on-the-nose comically American. All of the characters are references to, um, character- to, um, action movie characters. Oh, I went the wrong way, I think. Okay, that's weird. Um... Okay. Let me, let me check Cog Maze. the one that leads to... which ones have I not hit yet? Probably the one next to... the one that leads to Nail World, huh? Let's head up and around... head up back around. Nail world. Um, oh, okay. I think I see it now. That's where I'm supposed to go. Well, so much for that idea. Just a moment. Oh, shoot, new people. Um, what am I thinking of? A uh, Broforce. It is such an amazing game, so just like comically American. And it's fun. It is genuinely really such a fun game. I've always wanted there to be DLC or something for it, but it never happened until now. I don't know if it's an anniversary thing or if this is just something that's been on the back burner for ages, but either way, I'm happy to see it. And now for the not so good news. The one that makes me kind of sad. Is that another game, Risk of Rain 2, the IP has been fully sent over to Gearbox from Hoku Games. And this was. I have a funny feeling that this was their their contract from the start. That Gearbox would help with publishing, Hoku would work on the development, and Gearbox would help out where they can. And then after a certain amount of time passes, or once Hoku is burnt out and sick of working on the game, they would pass the torch over. So, personally, like, people are very pissed and worried that it's going to turn into Borderlands, and I'm... it's not gonna happen. 
Because on one hand, they have the full right to be concerned. Because some of the other games that those that Gearbox Publishing has worked on, on the development side, have been We Happy Few and Hello Neighbor, both of which are infamous for being gutted between the first release and the full release. That being said, Risk of Rain 2 has, been, has already been through like six updates. <laughs> this is not a new development team joins and doesn't know how to complete the how to make the game finished. This is more of a what's the word for it? It's like hospice care is for the game essentially. Just like put in one more update, maybe a little extra jump, because the game is essentially done. I, I can't think of much more that could be added, and I I think the devs are in a similar position. Of like, yeah, we're what else? Could they actually add? There's a few things that I could think of, but it would basically just be fan service. Here we are. This this must lead. Yeah, this 100 percent This is the bent screw. And now the door is unlocked. Awesome. This area is really cool. I, I do love it. Go back to the website. Okay. I think there's actually a badge I can get here in Forest Pier, but I don't remember what it is. Give me just a moment. Something in Radiant Ruins. Oh, the giant dancing eye in Forest Pier. Night is young and the music's high. Um. Oh my God, <laughs> that's that's gotta be it. That's the dancing, uh, the dancing eye. Now, how do I get there? Yep, that's the thing that I remember. This place is gigantic. That presumably this is the giant dancing eye that I'm looking for. I spawned. Um, where am I? Boats. Oh, there you are. Entrance to the cog maze. I don't really know what the E's are supposed to be. Okay, so from the entrance, I need to head left. Um. Okay, so it's completely airtight. How do I get inside? Is there a boat? Oh, that's gotta be it. That's the entrance right there. It just, you just enter from the, like see it from the bottom. So I guess I just walk around and see what I can find. Like people have their, people have every right to be pissed, but I I don't think, think it's gonna be as bad as people, people say it'll be. But I don't know why all of this is happening at the same time. It's insane. It's been like a week, all of the- all three of these things happened. There's just- it's just a principle that all the- when it comes to indie stuff, everything is synced up and everything happens within like... within days or weeks of each other. I wanted to see the I wanted to see that dancing neon eyeball over there. Doesn't look like, doesn't look like there's a path from here unless this is a path. No. Okay. 
Yeah, here's the here's the actual pier. So from here. Hey. I'd sing I, I'd sing Dancing Queen, but I haven't heard the song in eight hundred and eight hundred years, so it would probably be super off key. Okay. So I've done the event. Now from here I need to head to Abandoned Factory. That I believe that involves yeah, that doesn't involve a boat. Okay, so I need to keep heading over and then take that teal path to the boat. Recall correctly, there's also a path from here to um what is it? Ooh, hidden shoal as well. Like there's a there's a couple of places you can go here. This way. I'm not a fan of the in of an invisible maze like this. Ah, there we go. There's the boat. kind of just need to keep riding the upper path. Oops. Wow. That is incredibly cool. This whole area is just so, so sick. Here we are. This is abandoned factory. Well, prepare your eardrums, because if, if this is the place I remember, it is really effing loud. Oh, never mind. This might this probably isn't it. Because, yeah, Forest Pier. Wind Tunnel, I think, was the place that I remember being really, really loud. I gotta go to Neon City instead, so I'm fine. This might be a one way path. Huh? Oh. Crap, I do have to go to Wind Tunnel. <laughs> I guess in that case, I am going the right way. I 
kind of hard to tell where I'm even supposed to go, though. Whatever. I'm kind of just going to climb down and see what I can find. So I need to enter arch number three. So, here to here, I need to loop around. This is different. This is really, this is really cool looking though. Damn. All right, what's in the spooky house? Does Landry need to work here? Okay, thank God. Oh, well, this is a very helpful map. Oh. This, is, this has got to be a... is such a sick effect. Oh my god. So apparently there's a event here. Wow, that looks beautiful. And it's gigantic. That's about what I expected. <laughs> this is a water world. Okay. There's also a Neon City event. I'll have to do that later, because it doesn't seem like I can get to Neon City from here. Rest on the giant plant's leaf in Radiant Ruins. Where even is the giant plant?
south-southwest of the entrance. There's a bench and a red soda machine and a red vending machine that sells sodas. Okay. Let me see if I can match this up with where I even am. This place is so pretty. Uh, oh, bingo. So I just gotta go straight up from here, huh? Let's find these entrances again. I wonder I wonder if there's a trigger to be able to go inside of them. There's a bench as well. Um Oh, lovely. <laughs> Conversely, on the far east side of the world. Well, now that I'm here. Oh, I, that, that's gotta be it, a big plant. So I need to go down. And down to the bottom of this, there you are. Wow. wow. What an amazing looking world. I think of an effect that would help here. Yeah, that, uh, that helps. That fits the color composition and all that. But yeah. Now that Radiant Ruins is done. We now have a fast travel to Forest Pier, which is actually huge. So I'll be happy to go back there and wander around. There's a lot of places you can go to from Forest Pier. But for now, I think I'm I think that's about all I got. Thanks so much for watching, y'all.